936, the 92.1 WROI, WROI FM.com. We are streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5, and we will soon have some video put up on RTC Channel 4, and that's why Tim is in the studio. Hey, Hi yeah, there he okay. goes. See, he just knows all about it. What a guy. Yeah. Time now for our Fulton County Community Foundation report. And we got Brian Johnson and Allison Heidi in the studio this morning. So I assume, Brian, that means we'll be talking in a moment or two about scholarships. That's a very accurate assumption. See how I just picked yes. up on that? Yes. It's <laughs> very amazing. Perceptive, it? huh? Absolutely amazing. Yes. All right, talk so, about the foundation, what we've got going on. Well, hey, we're busy. Yeah, we've got a few things going on. Of course, we're getting the new year started off. Um, just a couple of reminders about things um, that are going on. Um, a few months ago, we had folks from the Honeywell Foundation um, on our radio program talking about a new endowment fund that they have. We do have a match going on for that, so if folks are interested in some of the um, things that the Honeywell Foundation, now this includes the Honeywell Center, but also some of their other education programs that they have in the community. Um, if you're interested in supporting that in Fulton County, we have an endowment fund and have some matching dollars available. So if um, people are interested in that, let us know um, and then it's it's January so I feel like we should probably start talking about Valentine's Day <laughs> less that's less than a month away less than a month it, right? away so um, this is um, of course become a annual tradition and since WROI broadcasts online I guess we could say this is a worldwide Impact. Worldwide. Can we say that's that? Right. And that's right. Be and I wasn't feeling old this morning until you mentioned this is our 19th year. 19th year wow. for the annual Give Your Heart to Your Community Valentine's Day event. Um, a lot of fun with that. Of course, um, you can send a Valentine's Day greeting. i um, like to say thank you to WROI for all your support over the years and, and continued again this year. It's great. It's a great, it's a great promotion. For people that do not know about it, what it is, it's a Valentine's Day event where donors can make a contribution to a fund of their choice and then um, send a dedication on WROI. Um, we also have levels where you can actually send a singing telegram, so groups of folks will be out in the community delivering, um, personally delivering singing telegrams. You're part of that usually, aren't you? I usually That's try to I be thought. part of that. Yeah. Send a long stem rose, um, and we've also partnered again with some some community organizations to send Palantines. Of course, those are pet Valentines, so you can send a greeting from your pet. Um, and thank you to RTC. I know Tim's been involved in this. Um, they allow us time on, on Channel Five to show greetings from um, pets and their owners. Um, We'll also have that on Facebook, and this year um, the Rochester Sentinel is also supporting us with that. So if you want to send a Palantine, um, a picture of your pet, and a greeting to the community, um, we'd love to make that happen again this year too. So um, it's always always exciting. One thing that um, is going on um, is the animal shelter is in the, in the middle of their capital campaign okay. um, to build their new facility. So we're trying to help promote that. So if if somebody wants to send either a Valentine or a Palantine and they want to um, support the Animal Shelter's capital campaign through the program, um, we just ask that you note that on the brochure when you make that order form and we can um, make sure that um, those funds get sent to the Animal Shelter. So kind of a win-win. You can Perfect. send your Valentine's Day greeting and also support the Animal Shelter. So, And of course, we would be remiss if we didn't mention the often imitated, never equal Don and Tom Valentine's Day show. Yeah, we'll give Don the credit for that. Um, yeah. he's, he's the comedic force behind yes, the yes. program. So um, that'll be on um, actually February 14th, which is a Tuesday. Okay. Um, and I believe you guys are going to start about 10 o'clock with that program, sending out dedication. So um, if you're interested in participating in that, um, we have brochures available. Um, we have some here at the radio station. We'll have some available at RTC, at the Sentinel, um, obviously at the Community Foundation office, um, and also at the Animal Shelter. So if you want a brochure from, to um, complete that and make a donation, of course donors get to choose where those funds go um, in addition to sending the Valentine. So it's kind of a win-win for our community. Uh, make a gift that's going to impact the community in years to come. So, um, looking forward to that event again. Thank you to everybody who's helped support that. Um, 
If you can't make it to one of the locations that has the brochures, we do have that on our website, um, nicf.org, and we'll have information about um, Valentine's Day on there. So, um, an exciting, exciting time. It in is. The community. So it's a lot of fun too. Uh, it is. It is, and a lot of um, goodwill is done, and also impacts um, by gifts that are made this year will continue to go on um, in the future and impact our community. So, kind of exciting. Well, you mentioned we have Allison Heidi with us this morning, who's our scholarship coordinator. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is we always, um, every year we always grow the number of scholarship funds that we have available. Um, one this year that I just wanted to mention real quick is the Dorothy A. Goss Memorial Scholarship. Okay. Um, Dorothy was a graduate um, from the Fulton area and um, had been involved in a number of programs, um, teaching throughout the country really. Um, one of her primary roles was um, teaching teachers who are interested in family and consumer sciences, so home ec, um, those types of things. Um, her sister, um, unfortunately Dorothy passed away this last summer, um, but her sister established an endowed scholarship that will help support um, students going into education. Um, and if there's somebody that is going specifically into that field of family and consumer science um, would have preference for that. So it's always wonderful to see how um, our local students, um, this one is specifically for the Caston area, um, but it's, it's wonderful to see how our community supports students as they continue that education. So, so with that, I'd like to welcome Allison. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. First, I guess, tell us a little bit about the scholarships um, that are available with the, with the Community Foundation. I know we have a number of scholarships. Maybe give us a number of scholarships that we have. Okay, well, Fulton County offers over 50 scholarships. Isn't that cool? That's amazing. Oh, when you think about it, yeah. that's really but, cool. But even better than that, that translates to over 125 yeah. scholarships. Wow. So some of them give multiple scholarships sure. to, to kids. So. Um, and that translates to over $110,000 that is given right here in Fulton County to our kids going on to college. That's great. Um, so we're excited to be able to be a part of this and to make this happen. Um, our system has actually been online for about the past four years. It's a, a really simple automated system. Um, I think the kids really like it. Um, it's easy to use. It went live in December, so these you can actually start today if you wanted to apply. Um, our system actually uh, matches you automatically so that you don't have to think about what scholarships you qualify for and what you want to apply for. You actually go into the system, complete the um, online application, and our system automatically matches you. So. Um, that's really a, a nice benefit that you're yeah. not having to look through everything to try and figure out what you qualify for. However, sometimes you want to know, do I qualify for anything? So we do have on our website um, a list of the scholarships and the criteria to actually qualify. So that just does help you um, understand how many you might be um, eligible for. Excellent. And of course, one of the important things is the date that students need to have their application done. So maybe remind us what day they have to have that done by. The due date is Friday, March 3rd, 3 p.m. Um, I encourage you not to wait until March 2nd to start this application. Yes. <laughs> um, it does require some letters of recommendation from community members or friends or um, people from the education field. And you want to give them enough time to, to do a nice recommendation for you. So, um, it certainly is the time to start now. And just one thing I want to encourage you to use, not your, um, your school email address. I'd rather you use a Gmail or uh, Yahoo or whatever else you come up with. And the reason for that is because um, those emails go away next summer. And if we want to talk to you or get in touch with you about a renewal or another opportunity, um, that's the best way we have to contact you. So we want something that you'll be using, you know, from here on out. Excellent. Well, you mentioned right. the email address. Tell us, if I'm a student, I'm interested in applying for this, are there pieces of information that I need to know ahead of time or would be useful for me to have? You mentioned references, things like that. Um, before I start this process, what should I have thought about before I start filling out the application? I would make a list of the activities that you've been involved in and what's been important to you over your high school career. 
because we're going to we're going to ask you things like your work experience it can be paid or unpaid we're going to ask you for volunteer activities school activities um, the school that you would like to go to what finances are required what it's going to cost you to go to that school um, if you are interested in need-based scholarships and, and are looking for um, need-based help you have to complete the FAFSA and that has to be uploaded the page with the EFC the estimated family contribution needs to be uploaded into our system so there are some documents and things that you do need to kind of gather before you Kind of, you know, complete the application. Do you get grades and grade point average directly from the school then? Good question. Yes, we, we actually do. Okay. That's one of the things that you request your counselor to send the transcript in. So, okay. yeah, you don't have to go pick it up. It's just, it, it is a very nice automated system. Even your letters of recommendation, um, you, you put in at their email address. They receive an email from the system. They complete it. It comes back into the system. Students never see it. Um, but it is a good idea to, if you do want um, someone to do a letter of recommendation for you, A, ask them first before you just implement their <laughs> email because they won't know what's going on and, and you know, they just need to know to expect it. Um, and give them plenty of time to, to write a nice recommendation for you. A little personal contact before we go electronic, yeah. right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. well, Absolutely. And that's been one question that we've gotten a lot too, I know, is if you have somebody that you want to write a letter of recommendation but they may not be comfortable doing that email what would you suggest for students in that case if they don't have an email address if, if the person that they're asking for a letter of recommendation doesn't have an email address um, we can work that behind the scenes if, if that you know comes to be just contact me yes. and we'll we can upload letters for them and things like that so that shouldn't hinder you from doing um, so but, using but easiest if you have somebody that's, that's able to do that electronically absolutely so. well and you mentioned um, one thing we have is some of our scholarships are a one-time scholarship um, sometimes that we have scholarships that automatically follow a student but there may be some where students can reapply can you talk to us a little bit about that process if we have somebody listening that says I got this scholarship last year and I, I'm still in college and I may want to reapply for that actually when we send out vouchers we send out um, the vouchers in the summer to let the students know here's what you need to do to um, get this scholarship and that letter normally tells the student if it's a renewable scholarship and what they need to do to reply. Typically, um, it requires sending in grades and schedule for the next coming year. Um, sometimes it requires a letter of intent and a personal letter to the committee to request a scholarship. Um, most frequently, if there's a letter of intent required, I send out um, that to the students that are actually in that um, realm of needing a letter of intent via email. So I've made a lot of contact. Most of the kids that have a renewable scholarship have been contacted by me via email to um, ask them to get that information in before March 3rd. And then I know one thing that we talk about occasionally is non-traditional scholarships. We have a couple that um, are due this time of year that kind of fit in with that. Um, maybe mention that and as we plan for the spring and summer um, we have quite a few um, scholarships for different levels so talk a little bit about the ones that are available at this moment okay a again when we say non-trad we mean probably someone other than a high school graduating senior so there are a few scholarships there aren't a, a large number but there are some scholarships that those students could qualify for they use the same online process it's really seamless um, except they'll be checking I'm a you know I'm not a graduating senior I'm either a college student or maybe an older person that's trying to get back into um, education mm -hmm. uh, some of those are Haggerty, um, Gertie, um, Bendel they're just out there and you can actually see that on the list of scholarships on the website yeah. to help you understand there are probably oh a handful of those available yeah. And then, and then talk a little bit about some of the scholarships that aren't available right now, but during the summertime, there'll be a few non-traditional scholarships. Yeah, there are some summer scholarships, and there are probably about three or four of those. Um, the Ginger Miller Scholarship, that's for higher education. 
um, the Law Scholarship, Frederick Great Law, Law Scholarship, Law scholarship. Um, and then there are a couple uh, local ones for um, that are like Fulton County, uh, back home in again in Indiana. That's specifically for a non-traditional student. So, yeah, and that scholarship will be um, available through the website, not an online system. That one's more of a handwritten one. But those will be available probably in the May time frame. So if you're a student now or you're contemplating going back to school, it would be a good idea to keep an eye on our website um, leading up to that time Absolutely. Frame. Yeah. A lot of information there. You mentioned March 3rd, Allison, as being the deadline. And, and my question would be, how soon after that will the student find out either if they had won that scholarship or you know, how good it's going to turn out for them? Sure. Um, it takes a while for our process sure. to, to complete. Um, we have a lot of community people that help us make the selection on these students. Um, but they typically find out at their senior award night. So probably in the May time frame, so a couple maybe are early June. But that's when those are announced and uh, they receive the um, information for the next step and how to, how to redeem that scholarship. Yeah. Our scholarships are always paid to the school. Um, we never pay the students, but these are paid to the school so that it can be applied to tuition. Okay, excellent. So give us a reminder again of if I'm a student, I want to get involved in this process, where do I find the application, important dates to remember, all those things. Just okay. give us a reminder. Our website is www.nicf.org, and then you go into Fulton County and scholarships. It's pretty easy to navigate through that system. It, there's an icon where it says um, download the application here. You can do that. That page also shows the listing of the scholarships and the criteria involved in each one. And the deadline is March 3rd. There you and, go. and if I get involved in this and have a question, how do I get a hold of you? Um, my email is allison, A-L-I-S-O-N, at nicf.org. You can call us at 223-2227. Um, Stop by. Or, yeah. Stop by. Yeah, exactly. Yes. The old-fashioned way, right. yeah. We, our ultimate goal is to match up students that qualify right. for these scholarships with them so that they can be put to use uh, to benefit individuals from our community. Exactly. And so, well, with that, Allison, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, keep thank up the you. good work. Well, thank you. Keep yes. giving that money away to those uh, needy students. Yeah, no, it's important. It's a big job. It is. It's a, big it's job. a very detailed job, but it's it's very vital to the to the success of the community. Yes. And, and thank you to the donors who have made these scholarships possible when you're talking about giving out um, over $100,000 in scholarships right. from local contributions every year. It's, it's a pretty amazing way. I'm always blown away. Um, one of my favorite things is to go to these award nights and see all of these things that students have accomplished and the awards they're receiving. It's really wonderful to see how our community has been supported by people from our community and, and how that translates into future generations providing more service to our community. It shows the good things about students, doesn't it? Does. It, it really does. It does. It's, it's a really, it's an impressive evening. Yeah. So, so, well with that, um, again just a reminder about Valentine's um, coming up on February 14th. Um, we'll have the order brochures um, available. Um, the deadline for that is we request that those orders are in by February 8th, um, so a little bit of time ahead. Um, but we'd love to have you participate in that, whether it be a singing valentine, a dedication on the radio, or a palantine shown on Channel 5, um, or on the Sentinel. We'd love to see you participate in that, or if you want to support the Animal Center um, capital campaign through that program, um, we'd love to be able to help. Um, if you have questions about anything that we talked about on the program today, you can always find us online, nicf.org. Of course, the scholarship application information is available there. Um, but information about the other programs that we've got going on. Find us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Give us a call, 224-3223, um, or stop by our office at 715 Main Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any idea you may have for our community. Ron Johnson, as always, thanks very much for the information today. Allison, thank you for being here as well. Tim from RTC, Hello. star of the show. Thanks for being here thanks. on the Fulton County Community Foundation program.